What's up you guys, what's going on? It's your girl, Baby, back again. And I wanted to go ahead and do something for y'all I haven't done in forever. I got my trusty, rusty, dusty tarot cards out here. And I wanted to go ahead and do a quick love reading. Uh, now, before I jump into this love reading, I do wanna say this, like, I know I've been away from my cards. I've been away from doing like really valuable readings for you guys for a very long time. And one of the reasons for that is because I suffered my very own like heartache and heartbreak. And so over the course of like healing from that and healing from like the trauma of it, I decided to take a little bit of a break from doing love readings um, 100% because really I didn't really necessarily know what love was. Like, you know, a lot of us experience our own heartbreaks because we don't know what love is. Like, you know, I was always somebody who was under the impression that, you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways. If God says that the situation be for you, then it be for me. And so I ended up like walking blindly into the situation, not recognizing that, okay, well, just because God said it be for you doesn't mean that you're on the right timeline. And so uh, my timeline that I was on was probably years and years and years ahead of like schedule or ahead of where this person was. Not only that, but who's to say that there's only this one person that you're meant to be with. And then, you know, that's who you're going to be locked in for for life. And so I had to like get through the process of recognizing that for my own self. Like, you know, life ain't, life is what you make it, but also at the same time, just because you make it and you destined it to be with somebody in particular, doesn't necessarily mean that's who God has for you. And so over the course of me like learning that and really coming to the place of me understanding that 100%, I went through all the motions. I went through all of the stages of grief, denial, I went through like wishful thinking, hoping they would come back. And so finally I'm at this place of acceptance. And so now that I've learned to accept that what isn't for me just isn't gonna flourish, now I'm actually able to open my heart to something new. And so I wanted to tell you guys my story before we even jumped into this, because I know some of y'all out there are gonna want to ask questions later on in the comments and say, oh, well, my person did such and such a thing. And what I'll tell you is, is like, use your intuition. If you have questions about like, oh, whether or not this person's lying, if you even have a question about it, then yeah, baby, like something in that situation ain't quite right. Something in the milk ain't clean. But also, if you know that you have a general distrust of all people, then then you should maybe look into it in terms of like, well, maybe this is uh, not necessarily a, a them problem. Maybe this is a problem with me being mistrustful or distrustful of other people because of some type of previous trauma that I've gone through. Um, you know, because again, if you're attracted to my tribe and my vibe and all that, and you are a part of the baby team, then you most likely do have like some sort of CPTSD or something like that. Girl, like I'm not trying to act like life has been uh, roses, cookies and candy because it really hasn't been. And so sometimes when you go through those motions of trying to find love after having had, you know, whatever, CPTSD, trauma or whatever, sometimes when you try to find love later on, all these things begin to become catastrophized in your own mind. And so you push away what could possibly be for you because you're too afraid, you know, you're too afraid. And so, you know, what I'm trying to tell y'all is, is drop the fear, drop the facade. I'm not gonna give you any energy on people that are not healed or haven't done the work. This is gonna be your highest, most compatible soulmate that we're looking forward to in these cards. Now, real quick, as I've been talking, I heard spirits say for some of y'all out there, I'm hearing three years. And so maybe it's been three years since you have been on this journey of self-discovery or there's something about three years here as it pertains to getting into communication with somebody. Uh, I'm hearing it's not all that is cracked up to be. And so maybe you guys did have a breakup or something of, along those lines with somebody in your life and they may have thought the grass was greener on the other side. For some reason, this person, I'm hearing that they thought the, green, the grass was greener on the other side. And so they could have chosen another situation over you or they could have chosen to take a different route uh, as it pertained to 
getting you to do what they wanted you to do. So some of y'all could be dealing with somebody that has a little bit of like a control issue or they're just a controlling person. They might have their own issues with like childhood trauma, PTSD and stuff like that. And so, you know, oftentimes, you know, you project your fears onto other people. And so if they have a, a fear projection, then the fear that they're projecting toward you is because they don't want to lose you. But then they begin to do a whole bunch of things that is inevitably going to make them lose you. You know, this person's probably playing games, the silent treatment. This person's probably doing 101 different things to make you want to walk out of their life. And so I get the sense that for some of y'all, it has been like a really rough, tough journey of trying to get to the place where maybe you just feel at ease or at peace, knowing that this person may not necessarily be on the right timeline, or maybe understanding that this person is not going to come back to you in that type of way. But also at the same time, I still feel like for some of y'all, this person is coming back. This person is coming back or they want to come back. And so let's just pull some cards. Let's just shuffle. Yeah, this person wants to come back or they are coming back. I got the father of coins and there goes the inner child card right here, which is the page of cups. The page of cups is about trusting your intuition, but the page of cups is also about an apology. So this person could be coming back to apologize. I'm here to Apollo lie. Okay, so this person might be coming back to Apollo lie. Like this person, I, I say Apollo lie because maybe they're going to come back and try to like pin this situation on you or they're going to come back in asking you for an apology. <laughs> you got the mother of coins here. First of all, you got the mother of coins. So some of y'all are sitting pretty, living y'all's best life, getting your rest in and just taking things slowly but surely. And then you got the five of coins here, which is about financial loss. So maybe some of you guys are recovering from financial loss. Uh, I know me personally, it's July the 1st, 2023. And this month, on the 24th of this month, marks my one year anniversary of me being and just living in my own apartment all over again. Because y'all know, uh, you know, I was evicted during the moratorium and I lost a lot of money during this during the COVID moratorium. And so now some of you guys may be in a place where you're recovering from your financial loss, the mother of coins here with this king with this five of of, uh, coins so some of y'all are maybe recovering maybe some of you guys are like in a better space or a better place as it pertains to your finances and your abundance and this person could be watching you go through that this person could be watching you bring yourself back up from the from the ashes some of y'all do do psychic psychic work some of y'all are psychics or you work in the intuitive field uh and so this three of pentacles card that i have pulled up in front of me this tells me that some of you guys are going to be getting back to business or maybe your business will be picking up in whatever type of way um she is also very highly intuitive or she could be somebody again that's she probably takes clients is what I kind of feel like here. She's got like a hoodoo voodoo jar right here, a water jar, and she's also got a wad of money with a crystal ball. So she definitely uses her intuition to get what she wants, but also when you have this like a when you do spell affirmations or water affirmations, uh, water collections and things like that, it could be tears in here, there could be bath water, there could be whatever. But when you do a, a water collection type of ceremony as an intuitive, it is to infuse the water with positive intentions, whether it be to make your money grow, to attract in more clients or just whatever. And so for some of y'all out there, maybe y'all have been doing that, like drinking water, minding your own business, like living your best life. And so now that money is getting better, it's almost like this person wants to come back in and like uh, make you some sort of offer that you can't refuse. You have the chariot card right here or the railroad bill card is what it's called, Miss Deck. Uh, and so there's somebody out there that's seeing your train moving on this track and they're looking at you from a loving perspective or they really just care about you. Um, but also at the same time, this person's guarded or they're recognizing that you're very guarded. They also want to come in and offer you some type of help and or assistance. You know, this card is all about spirit sending somebody into your life to help you lighten your load. And so this person could be trying to come in because spirit is leading them to come in and help you lighten your load in some type of way. Um, this person, I feel like you guys have a lot in common with this person for some reason. Um, and, and probably in terms of being kind of like distrustful or mistrustful of other people. Okay? Because the Seven of Wands is here. And the Seven of Wands card is about keeping people at bay. So maybe both of y'all have gone through something that was maybe a little bit more difficult than you want to admit. And so both of y'all may, may keep each other at bay. Or some of y'all could be like... Um, standoffish or your relationship started off in a very standoffish type of way 
or again like some of y'all this person has left your life for whatever amount of time and now you guys are either in a better place or a better space and so you're about to either invite this person back into your life or they're going to invite you back into their life but let's just take a look here I got the six of swords the six of um yeah this is the six of swords actually this is about moving away from something or someone that no longer serves you look at all that choppy water back there like there is some deeply emotional conflict that you guys could be avoiding as a result of this relationship or they avoid it because of their avoidance. it And it's like dusky is it's kind of like the sun is going down or something and then there's like this choppy 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 water uh, and what you're trying to get to is in the distance like that's probably like a two hour row from the shore like he's here but the way he's trying to get to is way over here and so he's got to go through all this choppy water to get to the other side and so maybe your person that you're dealing with right now could be in the middle of like a an emotional upheaval of some sort in their life and so we got the this is my favorite card in this entire deck y'all know that if y'all my day ones y'all know this is my favorite 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 card this entire deck the miss robinson card and the miss robinson card is a card about a woman who's an intuitive she's minding her own business and she starts going to this church in this church group and so as she starts going to this church in this church group these women begin to um call her like a, a devil worshiper or just whatever because she's doing psychic work she still believes in the lord but these women don't believe that if you're a psychic that you have you know that you are um ordained by god so they're they're really trying to kind of put her down and spread rumors about her and so the rumors that they begin to spread starts fucking up miss robinson's money and so when Ms. Robinson realizes that they are damaging her reputation, damaging her business, she tells them, well, you know, I'm doing something that I love. So if you don't stop messing with me, I'm going to take away from you something that you love. And so the woman that's been messing with her, the main culprit, she had one child and one child only. She was like barren or she couldn't have any more kids. And he was like her miracle baby. And so Miss Robinson sent the energy back to her tenfold and in kind. And I know this sounds really graphic, but the one thing that this woman loved the most, her son passed away. And Miss Robinson, this is her at the, at the boy's funeral. Like she's got her good fur on. She's coming to pay her respects. And she's smiling because this woman, she warned this woman about messing with her. And so, and this is not to say that Miss Robinson is the bad person or the bad guy or whatever, but in this card, she kind of is. Like, she, she put some type of um, hex back on this person that this person was trying to send to her. So there could have been bad juju, bad energy. Maybe this person had, you know, you never know what your, what your dude was up to. And so some of y'all, by you walking away or by you guys just living y'all's best life, you put the energy back on them tenfold and in kind. And so now this person has lost something that they, that they loved, that they really, really loved. And so the person or the thing that they really, really loved could have been you. And so even now that you're like living y'all's best lives and trying to like get to the place where you just move on and, and, and be happy, then now this person has lost something. And so now they're having to come back in and apologize. And so this is you at their proverbial uh, awakening, their reawakening, they, they funeral, okay? This is you at their, at their, um, at again, their reawakening, there's no better way to say it. And you were rejoicing at the fact that now they, that now that they learned their lesson, because now this person has learned their lesson. And in this particular card, the woman that was doing Miss Robinson like dirty or whatever, she moved away and she never came back and miss robinson was able to pick up her business and, and go on business as usual and so yeah some of y'all out there like i know that's a graphic story i know this card is about <laughs> you know somebody um somebody passing away but it doesn't have to be that grim for you like obviously like for for some of y'all out there this is not that serious it's not that type of deal it's not that type of party for some of y'all out there this just means that you're that your person was maybe sending energy to you maybe they didn't want you to be because again some of y'all out there 
some of y'all out there could have had some type of money or some type of financial success that was um, looming in the background for y'all. And so you went through a major, major, major upheaval when it comes down to your money. And so maybe some of y'all, this person didn't want you to do better than them. Maybe y'all were both on social media and this person, you know, that maybe he thought he was big man on campus. And so he didn't want you to do better than he did financially. And so he could have put some type of barrier, a roadblock in your way to throw you off. And so now that you've learned your lesson, it looks like a lot of you guys are putting your finances and your abundance, your job, your career, your finances above all else. And maybe that's why you're now putting this person or pushing them away. Because some of y'all get this energy that the reason why you are single right now is because you've been pushing somebody away or you've been renegotiating how you want to spend your time or share your time with other people. And so again, the Miss Robinson card, she did this because they were trying to mess up her money. They, they were trying to fuck up her money. So somebody in your life was really trying to mess up your money is what I get. And so when I was holding the cards, this one flipped out and flew all the way over here on my yoga mat. And so some of y'all, again, you literally walked away from somebody. You crossed all these emotional choppy waters to get to the other side so that you can continue selling your swords. Because he is he's on a boat with a whole bunch of swords that he's crafted himself and he's going to go sell them. He's a merchant. And so some of y'all are merchants. Some of y'all make your money in some type of way as it pertains to either being online or maybe you are a psychic. Maybe some of y'all do counseling services or you just make your own money based on your own energy. And this person was an energetic vampire, it feels. The devil card, which again is the Miss Robinson card, the devil card is about energetic vampires. And so this person could have been trying to take, 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 take away from you because they were either obsessed or they were jealous because the devil card can't indicate jealousy. And so they tried to steal from you what was meant to help you propel you propel you and propel your situation to the next level. They it feels like this person tried to take this from you. And so I get the sense that maybe some of y'all are away from people of that nature because of the simple fact that you no longer want this in your life to to bother you or to throw you off of your game. And this to me, again, it, to me, I'm, I'm, I'm reading these cards as it pertains to love and relationships, but this could be anybody. Like some of y'all could have been at work but while you were working, you also had a side hustle. And so somebody in your job space or your job's arena was trying to uh, distract you from your side hustle. They were trying to like, you know, if, if you will make money on the outside, they didn't want you working at that job and also having double the money, having double the finances and also having um, having access to, to internal clientele because your coworkers are probably your clients. And so I feel like these people were trying to throw you off because they didn't want you to get to the next level. And so I got here. So yes, uh, this is the Hermit card. The Hermit card is about spiritual awakening. And this is called the Dr. Grant card. And so he's in the woods picking a bunch of herbs and spices and, uh, you know, mushrooms and things like that to help create like tinctures and, um, and different sorts of health but, you know, things that have health benefits uh, so that he can help his clientele. So again, he's a healer of some sort. But also this tells me that you guys have been healing because this was probably hurtful for you. Or if it wasn't hurtful for you, ooh, it, I mean, obviously energy like this is definitely hurtful. If you find yourself in a hermit energy, it's because you've been hurt before and you've been, you know, and he's on this journey. You're on this journey to finding the peace and balance on the other side. You're trying to find equilibrium. And so that's what I get here with this Dr. Grant card. Let me get another let me pick up the energy though because i'm hearing that all this was meant to because again like if you are a healer and you make your money in some type of way as it pertains to like the psychic work maybe you do reiki maybe some of you guys are into healing generational curses because to me this card is about healing generational curses um then a big reason why spirit had you alone or maybe had you battling a whole bunch of people that were trying to make it difficult for you was so that you could realize that you have all that it takes like you are enough to move away from to move away from turmoil in your life you know, you have what it takes to get back to the other side to help other people to avoid the pitfalls and help them heal from brokenheartedness and all of that. And so this to me feels like everything combined into one was meant to help you in your in your spiritual path. And so, yes, like some of y'all at the end of the day, like I feel like for some of y'all, there is this energy of like having to move past people that didn't serve your highest and great is good any longer and so you had to send their hoodoo voodoo back on them tenfold and in kind but you did that because it was like self-preservation like 
but also the self-preservation because spirit wanted you to do it that way yeah be strong some of y'all are in this mode of like learning how to be strong and learning how to like move on from like what doesn't serve you you know she is obviously taming a cougar a wild animal a jaguar a bobcat whatever like you are using the power that you have in you to tame somebody's wild spirit and really to me this feels like not even like a, someone's wild spirit like this to me feels like jealousy or somebody that was very sexually attracted to you somebody that had a very animalistic urge toward you and they may have felt you know this person could have also felt like really overprotective of you they could have also been feeling like um like if i can't have you can nobody have you like that type of thing and so this person could have been trying to like to like tame you in some type of way but at the end of the day especially my ladies out there black women especially like if y'all are trying to if y'all are trying to if you're trying to get the upper hand or maintain like balance in your relationship then your person should be able to express love to you more than you're able to like express love to them or they should love you a little bit more than you love them like y'all love each other equally but a man that loves you more than he loves himself or that that more than you love him is always going to go that extra mile to help you out to make sure that you're okay you know he's going to make sure that you have what you need to to be successful in your life you know and so this feels like to me like this person didn't really like love you more than let me i'm gonna clarify this because i, I almost pick up like this person didn't necessarily like love you more than you love them like or they did but they were too afraid to admit that like this person that you're dealing with probably has a lot of animalistic urges because they probably had to raise themselves maybe they didn't have a very good upbringing maybe they were orphaned maybe they had a lot of different issues emotionally that was within them and so yeah they have a lot of love in them but they don't know how to regulate it and regulate their emotions because they have some type of trauma from when they were younger from when they was a jit okay yeah this person probably had some type of this person could have also done time in jail but this person was imprisoned by their own mind they probably have a lot of negative thoughts or negative uh emotions that they don't really cope well with and so when it comes down to love they don't really feel worthy of love so they try to trap you in different cycles in with them this could be somebody that tried to trap you with like a child or this person probably tried to trap you with emotional uh with like a trauma bond you know because some men that are too insecure to like love you the right way the way that they get you to like stick around them is by by having like some type of traumatic experience that ties y'all together the man that cheats on you loves you the most because he wants you to know that oh i can have anybody so why don't you love me the way i love you some men are very insecure in that type of way and so insecure men cheat the most because they want you to stay put they want you to be tame they want you to know that you're not special because you are special to them it's like reverse psychology but they don't really recognize how toxic it is because they have a, a big deep wound inside of them from being abandoned by somebody in their own life and so again this could have been somebody that maybe their parent was in jail maybe they were in jail maybe they have some type of like um they have some type of trauma in their own life that they're bonded to and so now it makes it hard for them to move forward it makes them it makes it hard for them to move forward emotionally you know this is somebody who's very strategic they are plotting against you the moment they found you or the moment they saw you this person most likely felt very tied to you maybe they really wanted to be with you but they had no real reckoning of how to be in a real relationship and i'm not trying to say this about oh black men are just so blah 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 but this person most likely was a black man doing this okay and i say that because you know a lot of black men again if, especially if he's born in the 80s if he's born in the 70s if he's even born in the 90s you know there was the such thing as the crack cocaine era there was the gang era and so a lot of men especially if he's an american black man if he is urban or he grew up uh, underprivileged then the likelihood that his parents did time in jail were on drugs or they had their hoop dreams shattered and so he had to raise his own parent so the the likelihood that that happened to this person is is a lot greater so you know i'm not again trying to talk about black men but take it how you will this is somebody who's gone through a lot of very damaging emotional energy because he probably didn't feel worthy because this person probably had an absent parent or um a tumultuous uh childhood 
they were either orphaned or this person probably had to like raise their their parent Ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all what I'm gonna say this because y'all got the y'all have this card that just flew out the top of the deck which I just picked it up uh but beneath this card was the Hierophant card and so the Hierophant card hit the ground which I'm gonna pick it up right now but um I'm gonna say this like there's this energy of juggling there's an energy here of juggling and so maybe y'all are going to end up being in a relationship back and forth with somebody and this feels like you guys are going back and forth back and forth and maybe y'all are really fed up and tired of it because the hierophant card is a card that indicates marriage but it hit the ground so it flipped out and so maybe some of you guys are giving up on the idea that you could ever be married because this person is kind of toxic like this person's not really trying to do the right thing by you or you feel like they're not trying to do the right thing by you and so you're probably tired of going back and forth with his ass and so i feel like some of y'all are ready to throw in the towel and say okay well i want somebody new and so let's just see yeah this card flipped out and hit the hit the ground it's the <laughs> If you look at this card, I don't know if I can get too close with this camera because there's no zoom, but if you look at this card for what it's worth, this is somebody that's invoking energy, invoking spirits, and he's possessed, okay? He's possessed by the higher realm, and spirit is the one that's guiding, the, guiding him. So he's possessed by the spirits, and spirit is who is guiding this person. And so here's the thing, like, I know a lot of you guys are probably really fed up with this person or fed up with your love life and fed up with the idea like why am I always stuck having to fix these niggas like some of y'all are feeling like that and I feel like it's because spirit is guiding you no matter what you do spirit guides what you do and so here's a perfect example y'all know I love the bible y'all know I love reading the bible but in the bible when Judas when um when Jesus at the at the last supper when Jesus is telling the, his disciples that someone's going to betray him when Jesus handed Judas I believe it was like a, a pitcher of gla a glass of whatever as soon as Jesus handed Judas this glass it sent an evil spirit into Judas and that's why Judas went out and betrayed Jesus because Jesus in spirit orchestrated that to have happened in that type of way and so I'm saying like I know that that sounds counterintuitive because God is not the you know blah 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 you think that God is not going to put that into somebody but literally like the the only reason why Judas did what he did is because it transferred a spirit over to him like spirit God the higher realms made Judas go betray Jesus and so even when something is meant for your bad or your 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 worst case scenario it's still something that god is putting forth to have happen for your greatest and highest good you know whatever he betrayed jesus but jesus rose on the third day and he never died again he went to the great great beyond and now this person is uh, infamous there's no one more famous than jesus not even michael jackson although at one point michael jackson was famous more famous than jesus um in terms of more people knew the name of <laughs> michael jackson and then they knew Jesus but whatever um but yeah there's there's this energy here of like if this person's doing something that's ratchet that's stupid that they out there cheating and doing the most if this person if these people are doing all these really ridiculous things to you it's most likely because God has them doing that like uh did this person ghost you cheated walked away treated you like you were no good like understand that there is a method behind this madness it's meant to propel you to your greatest and highest uh energy and so once again some of y'all's greatest and higher highest energy is because you guys are healers with this hermit card and then also at the same time some of you guys are meant to be in the in the realm of like I don't want to call it psychic work because some of y'all are not psychics i get that but really though like these are the cards that first came out you are being orchestrated to become back to to get back to a place where you are financially stable you're able to run your own business but would you really be in the same space would you really be as successful as you are right now if your heart had not been broken by this person if you can answer that question honestly and not have any ego in your in in here like release the ego and ask yourself that question really really openly and honestly i'm gonna tell you what i guarantee you that there's a bunch of y'all out there that would that probably would not be as good and 
there's a lot of y'all out there that probably would not be in as good as a, of a position as you're in right now had that heartbreak not have happened. Like if this person would have just come in and coddled you and, and held you and put you in their arms and shown you all the love that you really, really deserved back before you really realized who you were, then you wouldn't be as happy as you are right now. I guarantee it. A lot of y'all would still be kind of lost. Maybe some of y'all be out there cheating. Maybe some of y'all would at, at, the, at that point begin to become toxic because you weren't really in the right place to elevate to, um, to elevate to deservingness. Like we all deserve love. We all deserve blah, blah, blah. That's not the point, but you wouldn't really understand how much truly you deserve it unless you were out there like hustling for your last name or taking back your energy on these people. Okay, so with the devil meant for bad, God meant for good. And I get the sense that at this point in time, there really is somebody out there that's looking for you in the daytime with the flashlight. And they are going to come back in and make you some type of offer. I don't know why I get the energy of like, July, probably if it's not this, if it's not July in the next couple weeks, it's probably going to be the end of July, the 31st through, through like maybe like the 9th or the 10th of August. But some of y'all have a really, look at this. Let me tell you something. If you've been taking back your time, sleeping, drinking water and minding your own business and really like meditating, I really get the sense that you have found victory. Like you are at this place in your life where there is victory. And so, yes, like I'm talking about this because this is a love reading. I haven't gotten any necessarily positive cards that say, oh, you're going to be married to this person tomorrow. But I really get the sense that some of y'all just need to understand at this point why it is that you're single. Like the reason why you're single is because spirit is trying to set you up for a greater and higher or for a greater and better win. Like think about this, like if Oprah Winfrey would have married Stedman back in the 80s when they were supposed to, when she was like, I think 37 or whatever, would Oprah Winfrey be the Oprah Winfrey that we know today? Or would she be somebody totally different? And so she chose not to marry that man. She chose to put that, that the wedding date on hold and never picked it back up because she didn't want to be married. And so, you know, and I, I bring up Oprah because of this part too. There's also a place in her show or in her story where Oprah talks about getting on her hands and knees and like begging a man to be with her. Like when he tried to leave, she tried to, you know, hang on to his foot and, and like hold on to this person physically. And so, you know, and this person was cheating on her. He was lying. He was treating her very unfairly. And so you think about that, like she went from being a woman that was on her hands and knees begging somebody to be with her to having a Stedman Graham that said, okay, oh, well, if you don't want to be married, I'll still be with you for the next 40 years. So, you know, had she had that man that she begged to be with her, had this person really stayed and been with her and had she not experienced a heartbreaking humiliation, would she really be where she is right now, as strong as she is in the in the position that she's in right now? America's first black female billionaire, first black billionaire in general, male or female. You got to ask yourself how it is that you can make your life what you want it to be, how you can be that billionaire boss bitch. And the best way to do that is to walk away from what doesn't serve you. And if he ain't giving you what you want, then he don't serve you. And I know how that sounds. I know how it feels to make that conclusion and, and literally, literally in your whole heart want this person to be with you. But you can want in one hand and you can shit, piss, spit, whatever in the other one. And I guarantee you that shitty, pissy hand will get fuller faster than this won't hand. Because you can want what you want, but if it's not in your future, it's not going to come to pass. To pass or even if it is in your future but it's not meant to be in your future for 10 years five years whatever then it's nothing that you can do about that you gotta just roll with the punches and some of some of y'all out there they was they was swinging haymakers at your ass this person was was swinging haymakers at you like i'm not trying to i'm not trying to like take up for this person and act like they're not in the wrong because this type of energy right here says that they were wrong like this is the wounded warrior. Like you had a prayer in one hand, but your pistol in the other hand. Because if you play with me, I will lose it. In my trunk, there is an Uzi. And in my glove box, there's a baby Glock and I ain't afraid to use it. And so some of y'all literally were wounded and you had to build up this rougher or tougher exterior. But now that you're out on the other side of it, spirit is saying like, try to see the beauty behind it. Try to see the try to see the method behind the madness here. And so I really get the sense that, OK, well, we're doing a love reading. Some of y'all want love. But at the same time, I'm here to tell you that 
even if you want the love that you want, it's probably not gonna come to you right now because I think that there's something bigger and better uh, around the horizon or around the corner for a lot of you guys. The love that you want is not going to come into fruition the way that you think. You're gonna to have to be very strategic about how you're going to go about getting what you want out of life and out of your love life. And so the Ace of Wands here, the Ace of Sticks, is a very phallic card, it's very sexual, it's highly sexual. And so maybe some of y'all are doing some root chakra work or some type of chakra work in general. And so, you know, your root chakra starts at the bottom. It starts near your vaginal area, your, your pussy bits. And so maybe some of y'all are meant to like explore uh, deeper connections as it pertains to like love, relationship, sex, all that. And then you'll find out a deeper meaning or a deeper sense of like love and relationship and things of that nature because I really get the sense that some of y'all could be a little bit confused about what love really means because of uh, whatever maybe your religious upbringing maybe because of your childhood and so the first step to healing this part of yourself is to find a physical partner or uh to I'm not trying to tell y'all to go have sex if you don't want to have sex though but I'm saying that some of y'all need to find joy in not necessarily saying to somebody like i love you let's go get married but i like you let's see where this goes like date around and sometimes when you're dating around like i'm not trying to say this is sex in the city but some of y'all need to have some sex in a different city some of y'all need to like really really feel desirable and oftentimes when we try to dedicate our life to this one person and this one person doesn't really want us they really kind of put us on the back burner it makes you feel less than desirable and so whatever i'm trying to tell you girls like listen i've had my fair share of sexual liaisons with a lot of different people but once i found this person that i thought that i was going to marry and i wanted to blah say blah i ended up like tucking that side of myself away and saying like oh well this is only for him even though we're not married, this is only for him and I want to save myself until our wedding day. And then I'm telling you, even though Spirit gave me this great big old promise, that wedding day that I thought was going to come tomorrow, and that, it just never came. And so I ended up having to like renegotiate the way I felt about that. Like, well, you know, Lord, like... I know you told me I was gonna get married, but why can I not enjoy the physical connection that I want to enjoy with this person? And it's because it wasn't the right time. And so I still tried to be celibate. I still tried to like hold myself off. And I was like, what if this relationship that I think I want doesn't come for another 10 or 15 years? Am I gonna sit here and not get this, this taint tasted for all that time? Or am I gonna go out there and try to live my best life? And so, yeah, sis, I live my best life. I cut a record. I, I made an album and I did the things that I wanted to do, even though his ass wasn't around, even though there's nobody around. But at the end of the day, like I had to make the executive decision for myself. And I want you guys to make that executive decision for your own selves, too. Are you willing to wait for somebody to 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 get on their own timing or are you going to live your best life? And I'm not just trying to say like living your best life, just, you know, I think you get it. You picking up what I'm putting down. And so the five of swords is here. I'm telling you, some of y'all are, some of y'all are confused though. And so I think you're picking up what I'm putting down, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it down one more time just so that y'all understand what I'm really trying to say. Some of y'all could be like very religious or maybe you guys had a very religious upbringing. Maybe you believe that a woman that is sexually active and has uh, multiple different partners or that's dating around, maybe you feel like that means that you're loose or you're, you judge yourself harshly. Some of y'all could judge yourselves harshly. And so what I'm trying to tell you is that spirit is not judging you harshly. Spirit is trying to see how dedicated you are to your path. Are you going to do what God told you to do? Or are you going to be cowering in the corner because you're too afraid to take a chance on yourself? I highly recommend that you take a chance on yourself, though. Like, come out of this, this illusion. This is a disillusionment. Come out of this disillusionment. Like, you are meant to have what you want. Like, you don't have to wait for this one person. You can make your life what you want it to be, but you've got to be bold enough and courageous enough to go out there and start making your life truly yours. And so the mother of baskets is here. This could be a, a message from your mother figure. So let's just see what she has. Some of y'all, your, your mother figure is trying to get you to step, step on into the, the dark side. <laughs> For some of y'all, I don't know why I'm hearing her say the dark side. 
maybe y'all used to watch Star Wars together or maybe she likes Star Wars. Maybe there's some uh, a reference here to Darth Vader. You know, Dar Darth Vader was Luke's father, so maybe your father is... Uh, <laughs> maybe some of y'all really, really... Um, value your father figure and so as a result of you valuing your father figure you might put him on a pedestal of like sainthood and so your mother is saying step on the dark side like stop thinking in terms of just because this person's a saint or they whatever you're trying to you know you're trying to create this person into a deity or something stop stop making this person out to be like holier than thou and so, you know, sometimes when you make your parents out to be this holier than thou figure, or on the contrary, some of you guys really hold grudges against your parents. And so, you know, you're supposed to honor and value your parents that come before you because it's, it extends your life force or whatever the Bible says. But um, this energy right here tells me that you could be... The fact that you're putting like a, a parent or a father figure so so high up on a pedestal is hindering you in some type of way, especially my ladies out there, my black women. Like some of my black women out there, like we're taught to believe that our father is like the God of the household. He gets served first. He gets a big piece of chicken. He's more worthy than you are. And so step into the dark side. Who the hell said that his ass was like, she's trying to tell you like, he's not perfect. You're not perfect, but his ass ain't perfect either. Like stop putting other people above yourself. And once you step into that dark side of knowing that like love ain't gotta be this huge complex issue where somebody is greater in authority than you are even going back to what i said before like oh he should love you more than you love him why girl why can't y'all love each other equally why can't y'all love each other equally if you love each other equally then you're going to get a lot further than if you you know keep putting this person on the pedestal and making them out to be somebody that's better than you like he ain't better than you like you don't have to sit there and like not and again, I'm not trying to tell none of y'all to go out there and pop that pussy for a real nigga. I'm just telling you what I did, okay? Not even what I did, but whatever. But I'm trying to tell you, like, you don't have to hold yourself back because you think that it's going to make you more valuable in this person's eyes. If they value you and they recognize who you really are, then they're going to see that. They're going to see you for who you are and for what you're worth, regardless of whether or not whether or not you're loose and out there or just whatever right like so heal your inner child and make your dreams come true and healing your inner child does have a lot to do with like challenging the way that you were brought up you were probably once again brought up to believe that you should be served last you were probably brought up to believe that your feelings and your opinions didn't matter you were probably brought up to be very submissive to those that were of higher ranking and authority or just in greater in age than you are and spirit is saying no like you don't have to live your life like that you can challenge all of those ideas and make it and make yourself and make things what you want it to be like stop catastrophizing some of us have a lot of fears that was ingrained in us from childhood because we we had to believe those things in order for our own survival if you couldn't cook yourself dinner or nothing like that before the age of seven years old then you had to do exactly what your captor told you to do up until seven years old and i'm not trying to say that your parent is like your captor but for some of y'all yeah your parent is your captor okay your parent is your captor. I'm my daughter's captor. She, I'm, I'm the captain of the ship. She got to do what I say. But at the same time, like, who's going to challenge that perspective for her when she gets older? I've got to do that. I've got to, once she gets to a certain point where she can kind of fend for herself, it's up to me to throw her out there for the wolves. And if your parents did not do that for you, then you are going to be stuck in adulthood doing that for your own self. And so that circles back to what I'm trying to tell you. Like, yeah, like, okay, maybe they taught you that celibacy and abstinence was the right way to go because they didn't want you being a teen mother. But bitch, you was 40 years old. If you don't go out there and get your swerve on, if you don't go out there and get your swerve on it's because you don't want your pussy lit oh look at the father figure right here he listening listen to him listen to him what you gotta say hold on what'd you say nigga it don't matter what you said it don't matter what you said if you old enough to make your own decisions it don't matter what this what this person gotta say and so and to be perfectly honest as i look at this card this person's in his own world he's not even thinking about your ass like that 
And so for some of y'all, again, this is like your father figure, your parent figure. For others of y'all, this is a zaddy. This ain't your daddy. This is not your dad. This is a uh, daddy. Daddy dick, daddy dick, daddy dick. Up and down on his stick. This is him. And he's not out there like trying to stop you. And maybe some of y'all are like living in a limerence or living in like this, um, in this relationship that exists mainly in your mind. Maybe some of y'all really are very dedicated to this person. And so in your mind, y'all are together. And so in your mind, you're saving yourself for this person. And so you're sabotaging every, every other relationship that comes your way. And Spirit is saying, who told you to do that? Like you don't have to sabotage yourself because this relationship is not around the corner. It's not for a couple more years. And so you need to go out there and have as much fun as you can and learn what you need to learn because this is a spiritual lesson. And for some of y'all, the spiritual lesson is that this person is going to come back to you. And for others of you guys, the spiritual lesson is, is that once you go out there and like live your life and start like loving other people and allowing other people to love you, you're going to end up finding out that there is something greener. There's the grass is greener on the other side and that there is somebody better for you. And so maybe some of y'all are going to end up getting married. And just like that. I love that show, by the way, but and just like that, I'm telling you, some of y'all are going to end up getting married to somebody else. He got money. He's got stability. He's going to be there for you. And the world card is here, so and you're going to be happy. He's going to buy you the house. You're going to have the garden. You're going to have all those things that you want, but the only way to get here is to challenge your previous ideas of what you think love means. And love doesn't mean that you are tied down to one person for the rest of your life. And again, to, to further challenge that, some of y'all think that because whatever, maybe you do have a parent figure or um, somebody that you're very dedicated to. And so, yeah, like you can't choose your family because your, your family is karmically bonded to you. Your parent birthed you. So you can't necessarily walk away from that. But let me tell you something, that man that's voluntarily in your life that's not giving you what you want, walk away from his ass. Do the good foot. Deuces, nigga. If you don't want to do right, then you ain't got to do right. But I'm going to do what's right for me. Again, this is the idea of Oprah on her hands and knees, probably as a thousandaire, before she even hit billionaire, Billy status, before she even thought about the fact that she could be a billionaire. She was begging a nigga that wasn't worth her time on her hands and knees to give her something that she shouldn't even have to ask for. People should want to spend time with you just off GP because that's what you do when you want to love somebody and get to know them and you're trying to build with them. They love you just because. This is that idea that if someone's not doing what they naturally should be doing instinctually because a man instinctually knows to love a woman and to be with a woman, if he's not doing that, then there's nothing that you can do to force him to be the man that you need him to be. And I'm not saying that the man that you want him to be I'm talking about the man that he needs to be in order to bring into fruition in your life what you deserve and what you truly desire. And so reciprocity is what I'm talking about here. And this is not a reciprocal relationship. And so it probably was very hard for you guys to get to this place. But again, I do see the light at the end of the tunnel. The world card is the absolute best card that you can possibly get in any particular deck at all, especially when we're talking about a love reading, because this means that you guys have truly overcome all of your lessons. And now you guys are at the place in your life where this blessing is coming through. And so again, there is somebody that's gonna come in and love you the right type of way. And at the end of the day, this person that may have not been giving you what you wanted, or again, again, and also if this is like your father figure, your father figure can't be your husband. You can't procreate with this person, okay? You can't do that type of, you can't love this person in that type of way. And so the karma's over there too. And so yeah, if this karma's over here, and now you guys are at the end of this long, long, long journey, then really open up your heart to allowing in somebody new because there is somebody new right here around the corner. And for me, I feel like this is August for a lot of you guys that you guys are gonna walk back into this relationship. And I keep saying walk back into this relationship because some of y'all may just know this person already. Some of y'all may know this person already. I'm not gonna give you any, uh, I'm not gonna give you any kind of like uh, hints about who this person is because, uh, well, really outside of the fact that this person probably is on a healing journey, they could be like really young at heart. I don't know why I feel like this person has red hair and freckles, uh, but uh, this person is also somebody who, um, <laughs> this person's uh, a chameleon. This person's a chameleon surrounded by snakes. Because if you look at this, he's got a chameleon on his shoulder in this card. And so when there's a chameleon on your shoulder, but the, the chameleon on a shoulder 
is not the same color as he is. It's the same color as these snakes. And so these snakes are also sitting in the grass. So this person could be surrounded by the snakes in the grass around him. And so one of the reasons why maybe a relationship didn't take off is because this person is too busy trying to make himself like the snakes around him and not really being his true self. And so he's on a, a healing journey until he finds out how to be his true self. And that doesn't, that doesn't, it doesn't matter how old this person is. He could be 55 years old, 53 years old. He could be older and still have these same issues of, um, of, be, of, of being uh, somebody who disguises themselves or who hides who he really is. So be aware of that. But honestly though, ladies, I really do feel like there's a really good energy coming to a lot of you guys. This is the tower card. I just split the deck because I was about to finish this reading, but the tower popped out. Let me see what this tower is all about. Oof. Sudden heartbreak. Dreams, illusions. Dreams and illusions. There's a crack in the glass. Ooh, a sudden betrayal. My lord. Hold on. This is a given birth. So somebody could have given birth to a baby. There's a baby here, a newborn. There's some type of sudden betrayal coming to somebody out there. Maybe you're gonna find out about a baby in a wedding. And this baby in this wedding has nothing to do with you. And so Spirit is saying, use this to your greatest and highest good. Use this to your advantage. This is like your lucky day. Like this is the luckiest card you can get. It's the, um, the six of coins, which means that God is trying to give you something. I'm going to tell you all this quick little story before I get up out of here. But y'all know already I went through the issue with like being evicted and I got evicted in 2020 in August. And I went to go move to my grandma's house. And I didn't know what it was all about. I was so bitter, so irritated, so miserable about it. And, um... After a while though, I began to accept where I was and I realized how much I really, really loved living with my grandma. And then the moment that I like, the moment that like my perspective shifted, it was like the whole lesson was over. And then my grandma ended up passing away. The house was no longer in the family. And it was like this really quick, 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 quick succession of events that was like, boy, like God, you must not really like me at all, do you? But at the same time, Spirit sent me this promise that was like, this will never happen again. And just to show you that it'll never happen again, boom, bam, boom, look at your bank account. And so I was like, okay, I can live with that spirit. I'm still sad, very much so heartbroken, but it put a new perspective in my heart. And so that was one really huge heartbreak. But for some of y'all out there, and again, I'll tell you my story too, or I won't tell you the story about this, but... Um, some of y'all are going to end up finding out that somebody is maybe pregnant or they just had a baby with the person that you love. And instead of this person choosing you, they've chosen a totally different situation that probably, you know, whatever, that, that was much better suited for them in their mind. And so if I can give you any advice, it's the most hurtful thing that you'll ever go through, but go through it anyway. And so whatever, like maybe at the end of this really really tough cycle and finding out that this person is just not for you they were just never for you and the love that you thought that you guys both shared doesn't really belong to you it belongs to this person that they really are in a relationship with because now your limerence now your fantasy of what you thought was supposed to happen for you now has been shattered and broken apart and so at the end of the day, now that you've gone through this really tough time, I guarantee you some of you guys are going to end up in a much better space financially or you guys are going to find yourself. Well, I really feel like you guys are going to find yourself in a better space financially if you understand the lesson part of it. And the lesson part of it is, is okay, if they had a baby, get them, buy them people some pampers, buy them some diapers, put, you know, pack some little onesies in there, give them some baby lotion and make sure that the situation that you don't leave that situation with bad blood, because why would you, why would you like whatever that's their happiness, that's their joy. And just because their happiness and their joy doesn't include you, doesn't mean that you should be upset or bitter or sad or just whatever, because there's still a beautiful new life. And that is technically God's plan to have them go on their own way and not have them include you. 
And so I know, I know, I know, I know, but some of y'all are gonna get blindsided what I feel like is, is by a romantic relationship with somebody or you guys are gonna get blindsided because I think that the relation partner, the, re the relationship partner that you thought that you wanted is going to confirm for you that the relationship that you think exists doesn't actually, actually exist. And so there's hope. This is the star card, okay? This is the star card here. This is the card that says grandchildren. Um, and so I do feel like some of you guys are gonna end up in a relationship with someone that you will share grandchildren with you guys will end up in a much better situation but really again this is like again i'm telling you my grandma came to me this is like your grandma coming to you your grand you know your your ancestor a few generations back coming to you to make you a, a promise that things are going to be fine and yeah it's probably going to be really 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 uh difficult to get through and i'm not trying to like make y'all afraid of this but i'm trying to let you know to really appreciate where you are even in the hard times because the reason that the hard times exist is so that when the happy times come back around you can like really rejoice in them and so dang okay spirit this is the death card the ancestors card but again there's a baby here um So again, some of y'all's ancestors are really talking to y'all. Some of y'all's ancestors are really talking to y'all. Okay, the big mama card is out now. So again, your grandma's talking to you. Let me see, your grandma's talking to you. This is one of the happiest cards you can get. She's saying to drop that bitter ass, drop that bitterness. There's some somebody out there is kind of bitter about something because you are getting what you want. Like some of y'all really have a limerence or a fantasy where you're stuck on this one person being it for you. But spirit is saying like, okay, well, whatever. Maybe it's not that person in particular, but there is still somebody out there that is going to like give you what it is that you deserve. And so some of y'all are going to get what you want anyway. You're going to get to where you want to be anyway, but you got to really like drop this idea of this bitterness, the sadness, this really, really, some of y'all could be going through like some emotional or mental dysregulation emotional and mental dysregulation is like maybe you guys are having like uh mood swings maybe some of you guys are really really a lot more uh sad than what you're really letting on and really all you gotta do is cry like you might cry for 30 minutes maybe you'll cry for 30 days maybe you'll cry for a day or two but some of y'all need to let y'all have let yourselves have that emotional moment because again once you have that emotional moment something better is coming to you anyway this last person that you had was the was the was the knight of wands he was king dingling out there just doing what he wanted to do he was healing he was faking it with his friends he wasn't really being his authentic self but there is somebody out there that is authentic for you that actually leads with their heart space and so yeah yeah this this reading doesn't necessarily bode well in terms of like oh you're going to get married tomorrow but it bodes well in terms of like you're going to become the woman that you were always meant to be and then that woman's going to help you out to attract in the love that you really want and so yeah the daughter of uh not or i'm sorry the page of wands with the page of swords so a lot of people spying on you a lot of people may be talking behind your back there might even be some type of like not that this will ever happen but maybe somebody out there is talking about coming and running up on you trying to beat you up or whatever like there's a lot of uh, a lot of really um strong energy here of if you let this bother you it's gonna bother you if you let yourself be upset about this you're going to be upset by that but if not then just move on move on to the next episode look it this is the, this this is the full card this means that you are going to start over again or that you should start over again if you look at this card, this is a mausoleum. A mausoleum is a crypt. A crypt is where you put dead people. So this man is somebody that came back from the dead. He walked out his own tomb and he's about to rise up again, resurrect himself as a new being and move forward in life that way. Because the world card is the end of the deck. It means that you've learned your lessons. And the full card is card number one, which means now it's time to start over. And so, yeah, some of y'all are starting over again after dealing with like a really, really strong betrayal and all you gotta do is like listen i know what i'm saying is all you gotta do is 
some of y'all really do need to come to the acceptance that it's over and um I know how hard that is. Trust me, I get it. It's really hard to accept when a relationship is over, but once it's over, it really is over. There's nothing that you can do to make this person come back to you or to, um, or to walk outside of what it is that spirit has for you. Maybe some of y'all, the person that you're really in limerence with, maybe they've already passed away. And because they've already passed away, you know, you're still in this limerence and still in this emotional relationship with someone that can never ever ever come back in and give you what you want but the moment you decide to accept that that's never going to happen for you again with this person is the very moment that you're going to set yourself free and you're going to be free to open up to new love new levels of finances new levels of abundance and new levels of joy in your own world so i know i get it Leave me a comment anyway, you know, like, share, and subscribe. Keep it 100 with yourself though. And don't wait another minute, another moment, another day to let go of the past and move towards your future. I love y'all too.